We are now moving on to the, cons well, agenda item consider number six, consider approval of the compensation plan. Elaine, is that a good time to take it up or did you wanna take something else up before there? Um, no, this is a good time to okay. turn it over to Carrie Lynn and discuss the compensation plan. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, we did update the board letter with several options for the comp plan uh, motion tonight. Uh, one for option two, which was our recommendation, um, and then another option uh, to not do a raise, but continue with the market adjustment, stipend increase, and sub pay, uh, and then an approval for option one, which is the 2% uh, across the board. So you have multiple options there, and of course, uh, at the board's pleasure, we could vary from those and approve um, what the board uh, would like to go, go forward with. Sorry, Carolyn, I'm having to go to my SharePoint to go look at this motion or the letter update because I don't see the letter update on the the main public site. Is it, is it in the extras? Is it, it is in the extras. Okay. Yeah, I'm having trouble getting my internet to go back to home page. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Very slow tonight. So give us a moment. Board hey, members are pulling Lynn, it up. Could you um, share your screen with that on it for us? You bet. Thank you. Carrie Lynn or Pam? I didn't hear you said. Carrie Lynn. No, Carrie Lynn. Carrie Lynn. Mm -hmm. There we go. So here are the motions. Let's see if I can get that. I tell you what convinced me over to two other than uh, my trust in you, Miss Carrie Lynn, is uh, listening to Moraf today. One of his last suggestions was to be as flexible as possible with don't commit yourself to funds that may not be there in the following years if possible. So I think this is also kind of following TEA guidelines of what we can do. And Elaine, um, we, we talked about this, but just to clarify, there were some questions um, about why this isn't a gift of public funds because we're doing it before the contracts are in effect. Or Carrie Lynn, if you wanna go ahead and just clarify. Yes, and I, can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I, it's hard to see when you're sharing your screen. Uh, it is not a gift of public funds when the board makes the decision to implement this, even with contingencies, prior to the performance of the work starting, which for us, that date is July 1. So therefore it is not a gift of public funds uh, when we meet that requirement prior to the performance starting. That's the key trigger for that. Okay. All right, and so- Terry Lynn, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Trish. I just, no, 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 go ahead. I'll sum up before we make motions, so. Oh, thank you. Um, well, and I w listened to the commissioner today and to the TASB lawyers, and um, the input from the TASB lawyers was that there are maybe up to 2% of districts considering this right now. So it, it is something very new. They, they suggested not for multiple reasons for morale issues for um, the TRS hit. They recommended doing a lower percentage raise rather than uh, doing something that was going to impact the teacher's retirement and um, maybe be a challenge morale wise. So I, I would lean more to just a, a regular raise, uh, maybe at the 1% rather than than doing the the lump sum because I don't want to hurt our teachers that have been with us the longest and that's where I am. If I did that, but that I would still go two percent because all of our surrounding districts are two and three percent. We would look silly coming in at one. Well, but they're just now catching up with us with their two and three percent from the numbers from the last meeting, um, if, you know, Georgetown is 495, Round Rock's 50 now, and Pflugerville's 50 with their raises, and we're already at 50. 
Grace, you, you raise an interesting question. Carrie Lena, I'm curious, where do we try to stay at in the range of being in the market? Do we do we want to be at 100 to 102 percent? Do we want to be at is 95 too low? Where do we try to stay in that range of market ratio? Right. So with teachers, um, the board has taken a philosophy of leading the market. But if you're asking me just from a, a purely compensation uh, perspective, you want to stay between 95 and 105. So with teachers, though, I think you've got to stay at, you know, really right at 100 percent. Otherwise, uh, you're, you're just not going to be as competitive. I, I wouldn't say that for any other scale. Uh, except for the teacher scale. Um, but again, this board has made it a priority to lead the market with teachers. Um, and Grace is right. Um, for most districts, they are catching up this year. Uh, if they do the, by doing the two and three and 4%, it will put them right up against us at the 50,000. Now, Pflugerville has exceeded us. They, they exceeded everybody this year with their 3% uh, increase. Not by a lot, but, uh, you know, that zero year matters to those zero year teachers coming out of school. Uh, but so th that is true. Round Rock would be at 50,000. If we do the 2% lump sum, we would be equal to Round Rock. Uh, Fluke and Georgetown is just slightly below 50,000. Um, and then, of course, Austin, we know that they compress and they're a little bit ahead of us. So we would we would be stay at a competitive place for the 2021 school year with the 2% lump sum. Our teacher scale would remain competitive. You, you know, you have that little um, the way we have to rebuild it is the zero year and the first year would be both would be 50,000. Uh, so it, it, it looks a little interesting, but again, it, it gives us the most flexibility. Carrie Lynn, I'm sorry. I thought we were at 50,000 last year and Round Rock's just getting to 50,000 with their raise this year. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, that, that is correct. Even with a 1%, we would still be a little ahead, wouldn't we? Yes. It, with a 1%, it would put us to 50,365, I believe, uh, just a little bit ahead. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I'd like to point out, uh, Pflugerville passed that well before even spring break happened. And so they kind of jumped the gun to be first in line with announcing raises. So they they don't know how COVID costs or other things might factor into some of their budget now. And also, um, we're doing a lot of other amenities in our budget. We're reducing classroom sizes for elementary teachers. We were put in some other parameters to really um, show to, you know, show our commitment and, and we're doing a million dollar uh, benefits package and we're offering a 0% uh, insurance option. And so I am not really comfortable with most of these options. I think we really have to pick between raises and or staffing levels at this point. Can we pull the item off the screen for just now while we're doing yeah. discussions and then we'll you bet. Okay. Uh, oops. There we go. All right, so we're still on the compensation discussion. Any other trustees? So the board did a lot of really, really good work last year to, um, as Alexa said at the last meeting, front load uh, a raise to make us um, the most competitive uh, of, of any of our neighboring districts. And yes, we're looking at other districts around us who are uh, approving raises to catch them up to where we are today. Uh, the simple fact is we don't know what the next 12 months is going to look like. Um, and I've heard from a number of board members um, over the last couple of meetings uh, express some, some real concerns over what does next year look like in terms of funding. Um, and, and you certainly don't want to be the bad person, right, um, who says, I don't think teachers deserve a raise. That, that's simply not the case. Um, as I stated on Tuesday, um, 
I, I think it's obscene the, the amount of money that teachers are paid to begin with. That, but that's something we cannot address during a pandemic, the reduction in revenues, the, the, the little signs that uh, uh, Austin is giving us with, hey, don't expect a lot of uh, love from us next year because our coffers are dry with, uh, with reduction in business taxes. Um, the, the simple fact of the matter is while so many people in our community have taken wage reductions, have taken furloughs or have been placed um, in unemployment lines, many of which are still waiting to receive that first unemployment check. Um, this district early on made a bold move like other districts did to keep paying our teachers. And we're all in this together. And quite honestly, I don't wanna feel bad for asking that we maybe just take a look at keeping things the way they are uh, in the foreseeable future let us get through the next 12 months, and then let's talk about a, a raise that, uh, that, that shows, them, sh shows our staff uh, just how much we actually care about them. But at this point, to commit millions of dollars that we don't know if we're going to get back or we're going to be able to sustain, and we're looking at the possibility of, of uh, doing other things with, with staffing in the future, um, I, I just don't think it, it, it's, a, it's a prudent move. Um, those are my opinions. Um, I, I see Aaron is, is looking to talk also. So, yeah, I've been typing up a couple of notes to try and summarize my comments. I think I'm um, in a similar position to Jim in his comments. Um, at Tuesday's meeting, um, I stated that I would like to support a 2% pay raise for our staff. Um, I said last week that I don't like the one-time lump sum payment. I think we want to make a, a pay increase that we're ready to stand behind long-term. I think we owe that to our staff. Um, and I recognize that supporting a pay increase in these times is a difficult thing to, to do where so many Texans are out of work or experiencing furloughs or pay reductions. Um, so I would like to support this pay increase, but as I explained in our Tuesday budget meeting, while I'd like to do that, I can't in good conscience do that um, if, if the administration and maybe the superintendent in particular remains committed to our proposed budget, which ranged from $28 million to $42 million in deficit for next year. Uh, I think the proposal or adoption of such a budget would be unacceptable to me, particularly in the year before the legislature meets to consider the resources available in the state of Texas to fund public education for the next biennium, which I think we all are estimating to be significantly more constrained than they were in the years when House Bill 3 was considered and adopted. So um, I recommend, or I recommended Tuesday that we work to reduce the budget deficit to something in the range of 10 million or less. And that in that case, I might be willing to consider um, this approximately $8 million worth of compensation increases if they were part of such a budget. Um, but so far, I haven't heard or seen any signals that my feedback from Tuesday is going to be part of our budget process going forward. And so long as that's the case, I unfortunately will not be able to approve the proposed compensation packages. And frankly, I wouldn't be willing to consider any of them given, given the size of those proposed deficits for our coming fiscal year. So. Dr. Gearing, I would ask you if you could clarify a little bit your plans relative to the budget for next year and how you're processing some of the feedback from those discussions. Yes, Aaron, thank you for giving me that opportunity. I appreciate that. And we did take your comments from Tuesday night very seriously. We've had several discussions about it. Um, and of course, we're not able to bring you concrete uh, results from those discussions tonight. But uh, we do take those very seriously, and we are going to bring you an alternate budget um, that uh, takes into consideration the request that you've made. So 
I will agree with you 100% in that if we're going to bring you a budget that is $10 million or less deficit, then the decisions you make tonight are absolutely critical to us because I'm not sure um, with the positions that have been released by the board already, and you just released an additional million dollars in positions tonight. Um, uh, and I do want to point out that we gave you the opportunity to not release those positions, which would have helped with preparing a, a lower deficit budget. Um, the board chose to release those. So we, we do have um, opportunity tonight inside the compensation plan to do, as you say, there's about $8 million. There's the 5.5 million in raises. Um, and there's an additional 1.7 million in uh, salary adjustments that the board has the ability to put on hold um, in order for us to be able to take those um, and use them to bring you what you've asked for. So my recommendation tonight to the board would be if you do want us to bring back a lower deficit budget, then these two items are extremely important for you to not approve tonight in order to give us the ability to build those into an alternate budget that will meet um, the request that you've made. When you say Bruce, these I two items- the, the past practice, can you hear me okay? Um, the past practice has been, we approve the positions, but administration decides whether or not to fill those positions. So um, that's, that's kind of how we've done it in the past. So um, I hope that is more understandable. Yeah, and I have to push back a little bit on that as well, Dr. Gehring, um, just because you've brought us uh, a request to release positions so that you can uh, make the decisions that are in the best interest of, of children in the classroom. Um, it, it, I, I'm not sure how I feel about you then saying, well, you're the ones that just released this, so uh, you're, you're basically forcing us to spend the money. We, we're giving you authority to, to exercise those funds and, and hire those positions if that is what is in the best interest of serving our children in the classroom. But um, I, I, I don't think that's uh, tied necessarily to uh, raises across the board or uh, to Aaron's point, uh, a $28 million to $42 million uh, budget deficit. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm a little confused by that statement, but uh, maybe I misunderstood it. No, I appreciate that clarification and that does make sense um, and we'll certainly take that into consideration. Um, the positions that we approved tonight, those were um, all in special education, correct? And, and those are in areas that are, that we have specifically asked administration to address. Those are areas that we have had meetings after meetings where we need to hire, we need to support special education better. So um, I guess I'm not understanding. Yes, we, we wanted these positions. We approved these positions because, and the administration brought us these positions because we asked for these positions. Um, in terms of, of the pay scale and compensation, I, I think I started just very and much in the same place as Grace that I felt like, gosh, we can't do this to TRA and, you know, it should be the 2%. Um, as I was calling principals over the past few days to ask them about bell schedule, um, a lot of principals shared um, what they thought about compensation and, uh, and they said, yeah, the one-time payment is weird and it's different and we've just never done that before. But a lot of those principles were here during the big budget cuts almost 10 years ago. And, and they said that was terrible. And that was the worst, you know, worst time of their entire career that they remember. And they said, if, um, they said they trust you and they trust Elaine and they trust Carrie Lynn. And they said, if, if that's what they're recommending and that's going to help us not be in that position, then, um, then they would understand it not being a 2% raise and they would understand that um, in regards to their retirement. One thing we had talked about, Elaine, um, if you could help me with this one more time or, or I just kind of spell out we had talked about um, 
yes, we're, we're doing this because we don't know what's coming, right? And, and we're preparing for if there are cuts, you know, we're, we're, we will be in a better position. If, if there's not cuts, if we're able to maintain um, the funding sources um, that we've been given, if, it's, if our economy starts to bounce back, are there any contingencies in there for, can you explain what the um, two year and three year would look like for our staff? And I'm not sure if that's Elaine or, or Carrie Lynn, can you all explain um, a little bit more about that process? Well, of course, each year that we get closer to, we have better information. And so if, if, if the funding cuts don't materialize or if the tax collections don't take a dip like we budgeted for them to, then we're in a much better financial position to give raises or even better raises in the future. Or you could even, to make up for it, do a raise and a one-time payment in conjunction to, in effect, reward employees. So you have many options if funding is better. You don't have any options if funding is cut. And the more you approve in new positions and salary increases, the harder it is for us to cut in areas because there's just nowhere to cut. 88% of our budget is payroll. Um, I, want, I want to say I really appreciate the clarification on the early release positions. I uh, was under the false assumption that once those were released by the board, we were committed to those. So um, that does enable us to go back and look at, at the positions that have been released already, but not hired yet, um, and perhaps put a hold on some of those um, depending on, on where they are. Um, so I appreciate that clarification very much. The reason that I appreciate it is because as we started looking, we only have about $5 million in positions left to hire. Um, and that's part of that $28 million deficit. And so if we were to have to bring the deficit back down by $18 million, that means that we'd have to completely freeze hiring in, in any of those additional positions of that $5 million that's left over that the board has not yet pre-released. So having the ability to go back inside that pre-release number and look at those positions too gives us a better ability to be able to meet um, the request um, of, of reducing that budget by $18 million. And so um, we will certainly go and look at that, as Elaine just pointed out. 88% of our budget is in people. If I'm going to find 18 million, it's going to be in people, um, most of it. And so um, that's definitely where we'll be looking now to try to um, meet your request. Dr. Gearing, I appreciate the clarification and the assurances. Um, I hear you say you'll look at it. You'll take the feedback under consideration, but I'm being asked tonight to commit dollars and I'm, I'm having a hard time making that swap. Um, I, I don't know how, um, I don't know the level of your commitment or conviction to uh, the budget modification and I don't know where we're gonna end up. And so I feel like um, I could support this tonight and I, it may actually make your job harder um, I could oppose it tonight and make your job easier, but I don't know your level of commitment to the overall budget amendment process. So I have commitment to bring you an alternative budget that meets your needs. And in order to do that, my recommendation for the board is to not approve the pay raise at all tonight and to not approve the position adjustments of 1.7 million so that we have the ability to work that into an alternative budget. Um, the request came from you, Aaron, specifically. I'm not sure that I've heard enough from other board members to know the feeling of the board as a whole. Um, and I think that's your job tonight is to come to some consensus about the compensation plan. My job is to explain what your options are and to make sure that you understand the consequences of those options as we go forward. So in order to be able to bring you that alternative budget, it would make, you're right, it would make my life a lot easier if you do not approve pay raises tonight and you do not approve the, the adjustments to compensation um, that will free up dollars that we can absolutely bring back to you in an alternative budget that does not have a deficit of, of 28 million in it. Um, we will also need to look at other positions that, uh, like, like I just said, have been pre-released already. We'll go look at those, but we'll also certainly look at the ones that haven't been released yet. Um, and that are not 
um, yet even um, approved. And so we will definitely be, be bringing you back something that is a combination of all of those things. I think it's possible to do what you're asking me to do if you don't approve those two things tonight. Um, it, it might be possible uh, with you approving those two things tonight, but it certainly makes it very challenging. Board, it'd be good to have your input. Um, some of the discussion obviously is budget. When you have 88%, I think it's Elaine, that's, that's the number, right? That, that we're looking at 88% of what we're looking at in the, the general revenue budget. The, bu the budget that was, the budget numbers that were I'm presented not. Tuesday, 88% of those dollars are in payroll. So if, if we're going to say we want X amount of reduction, then that obviously is going to need to come some part of it from payroll. Um, what do we feel, uh, Alexis? Earlier, you know, she's she's working right now between staffing or pay raise. I think it's kind of where you're at. Either we staff it or we do the pay raise. We can't do both. Um, there could be um, this this hybrid going forward, but I haven't heard if the board wants to see that. Um, I personally, right now, I'm noodling on the fact of I. I I know we need to look out for future years. So pay raise is not something I think right now puts our board and puts our, our teachers and our staff in, in a solid position if we try to do a pay raise, a, a, a regular raise. The lump payment and the holding are the two options that seem to, to work with kind of the constraints we're working with, but they both have uh, different things to weigh. And so that's kind of where I'm, I'm looking at as board. What, where are y'all thinking as far as budget? Aaron said he wants to see a, a deficit lowered um, by a certain amount. That definitely goes into certain areas or could, according to administration and payroll. What are your thoughts, um, other thoughts on uh, the deficit or how this impacts our budget? Well, and I, I just wanna point out, kind of go back to releasing some positions and some parameters with uh, reducing classroom sizes for elementary teachers. We approved all of those under very different circumstances. And while I would love to continue showing our support to teachers in those lower levels and have a lower classroom size, you can't do that as well as support a 2% raise. And so that's what I was getting at on Tuesday night. Do you want me to go below the line or not? Because I feel like those are the considerations. It's kind of an either or. And so, um, you know, under ideal circumstances, we would do both, but we're not, we, we could never prepare for a pandemic and this kind of economy and what it's doing to our schools. And so, um, yeah, so if we want to reevaluate those numbers and those releases that we did under very different circumstances, I am good with that, but I can't go forward with the assumption that we're gonna hire and do all of those numbers and approve a raise at the same time. It's just not feasible. We can't sustain that at a $42 million burn rate a year. So I may think about this a little bit differently. Um, I, I think we have two separate issues here. The issues are obviously connected, right? We've got a budget issue, and we also have raises for our staff and administration in the face of a pandemic. Um, Quite honestly, I, I would like to tackle the issue that's at hand um, on the agenda right now, which is the compensation package. Um, I, I'm not sure that um, any amount of horse trading is, is going to get us uh, to, a, to a solid resolution in terms of, well, if we can reduce the budget by this, um, we can do this. Uh, the, the, the question that I see before us right now is, given the, the economic landscape all of these signs that we see, especially from Austin and the uncertainty that exists over the next 12 months is right now the time to give a raise or not. That, that's the, that is the only question I'm trying to answer for in this moment. And uh, I just, I, I cannot in good conscience uh, say that it is a fiscally responsible move to offer any sort of additional increase, especially on the heels of front loading raises like we did last year. Um, I would really like to get this agenda item um, settled. And then uh, I'm very interested in, uh, to Aaron's point, what do we do about the, the budget that uh, that we're trying to adopt for next year? So um, that, that's where I stand on this. So I guess I'm gonna throw an opinion in here also. Uh, 
the parameters given to us Tuesday night were fair from Elaine, but they were also the most, if, if everything possible could possibly go bad, this is the worst case scenarios. And I think we need to keep that in mind. We are, and the other point of that is we are in a pandemic. So there is no way, there is no way we could have expected that or budgeted for that. So if there was ever a time for to use a fund balance, this is the year. I would never suggest that we do this for the next, for the following years after this. But this is the reason we have a fund balance is to get us through these times and to make better decisions as we know better information. And if we choose not to give our teachers some type of increase, whether it is a one-time pay or our addition to their pay, uh, normal employee salary, we are going to be the only district in Central Texas to do that. And guys, we got positions to fill, SPED teachers. We got really hard positions to fill, and we are not gonna help the morale of our teachers at all by doing that. So if we're gonna have to cut, I guess we find that 12% uh, in programs, whether it's SATs or PSATs or APs or whatever we have to cut, but this is not the time to not to pay our teachers. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with Pam. I think we're, yes, we are in the middle of a pandemic and it, we are going to be asking more and more from our teachers over the next few months. And we're going to be hiring positions that we need to help pick up this gap that we know is coming. Um, and we want to be able to recruit the best there is. We want to be able to keep the best there is. Um, before I spoke to some principals, I would have said, let's do the 2% um, raise. Um, after talking to Elaine and talking to multiple principals, they said doing the one-time payment is, is okay right now because it is different. It is something we haven't done before, but we're in the middle of something that we haven't experienced before. And um, if we recover, then, then we can make it up. And if, if we don't, then we have an increased salary. So given that, um, that this is those times I would I would support a, a two percent one time payment. Um, I don't love it. <laughs> I think Grace said I don't love this. It, it's not uh, it's not optimal. It's not optimal for TRS. But hopefully, um, if we're able to recover, then for our teachers that are our educators that are within those five years of retirement, we're able to make this up down the road. But um, that that's that's where I stand with that. Elaine, what would a 1% just regular raise cost us just at this point? About $7 million. The 2% is costing 5.4. Elaine, you broke up on me for just a second there when, when you answered Grace. Can you well, say that 1% again? $2.7 million. Thank you. I think my concern is, and, and Pam, you you really brought that to the forefront, and it's something I've been noodling on, which is we have a large fund balance right now. So continuing forward, I I don't I don't think I could do that continuing forward. But we have a large fund balance now. I I I think the the one time payment, looking at the parameters and the discussions we have, put us in the best position for our giving morale, giving support. When you look at, we are a personnel business, 80, 88% of, of our budget is going to payroll. We're, we're asking teachers to be there for our community. We're supporting students, that's what we do. Um, I, it's, it's a hard decision though. So um, I, I just think I, 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 I like the idea of the 2% the one-time payment because it doesn't commit our future budget. It spends on the fund balance we've built up. It will do that, yes. Um, and I agree if we do vote on this, to Aaron's point, because I know he's going to come back and say it, I think we're still going to, I mean, we're still going to have some hard decisions when it comes time for budget because we're 88% payroll. Just one other observation. I think um, I'm not opposed to using some of our fund balance, and particularly if we're talking about using it to pay our teachers and our staff. 
But my caution is the next year's budget that we're talking about is not the year when we're really going to feel the pain. You need to be looking to the next biennium. That's where we're really going to feel the pain. And if we spend a bunch of fund balance now, we're going to wish we had it two and three years from now. That's where the real pain is likely to come and the real, uh, and that's, that's why I'm trying to help us sort of smooth that cliff, right? We can see the cliff coming. I think there are no two ways about it. We just don't know how deep the cliff will be. Um, and the only way to smooth that is to trim our sails now. And Aaron, I agree with you. Um, and I do like that we are comparable with other districts right now. It, it is a hard decision. I um, because I know we all in our heart want to give teachers raises. Um, that being said, I think one percent regular raises is as much as I'm comfortable with right now. But I think we've got to see some of the reductions because I, I am worried. I'm not so worried about this coming year. I'm I'm worried about two and three and four years down the road. And I don't want decisions we make now to result in a reduction in force later. Um, that's my concern. Well, the stipend helps that. And I, I'm I'm great about looking three years ahead and four years, but I'm not willing to say that three years ahead that we fell off of a cliff. We don't know. And this gloom and everything is just not always going to be gloom and doom. We need to do the best we can now with the decisions, we, with the information we have and move forward with new and better information as we go. But assuming three years down the road, we're gonna be still in doom and gloom. I think that's just a lot of speculation without facts behind it. Well, when we're talking about spending down 28 to 42 million. Yeah, it's not new. It's not in the spreadsheet. The numbers are there. They're not lying. They're telling us we're jumping yeah. off, you know, and creating a huge deficit up to 42 million this year. And then what that uh, compounds to in the following years. And Elaine's projections don't paint the worst case scenario. They, they keep in the one cent golden penny. They don't take any account for allotment cuts or uh, compression cuts. And it also factors in fast growth district. I don't see us retaining a fast growth district when we can't get students here. We So we're assuming some benefits that we're reaping the rewards of now, but that may not You're be there in the future. We're, okay. Who says we're not getting students here? We're getting students. The, the the projections right now, we're right on target to receive the students we're supposed to be receiving. The projections are an all-time high in a 20-year time frame. It, it's 1,800 students. We have never seen that kind of growth in one year. We've never had pre-K come in on that year, too. And it's not going to account for... But I mean, Leander, City of Leander just put out like their growth is in the midst of all this. It's phenomenal still. They're still growing. Um, houses are still getting sold. Um, so I hear you. Like, I think that's why that's why I would this one time in the midst of this support a one time payment, um, because we don't know what's coming. But I'm not going to assume that it's off the cliff. Um, I got to go with the information that we have and and prepare as best we can. And I think that we are preparing by giving a one time and not the raise. And, and then we move from there. I think trustees y'all have all made really good points. That's why this decision is so hard. I mean, Grace, I, I agree. One time, a 1% raise sounds better than committing a budget to a 2% raise. Um, and I, a raise is, 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 has certain benefits to it. The one-time funding has benefits. Holding has benefits to it. They all have um, things to consider. Y'all have all made very good points. But at some point, we either need to come to a vote tonight um, or it ends up tabling, but that's pretty much like a, a vote that you're, you're, you're kind of holding in place. Um, so we, we need to have 
an understanding that at some point we need to have a resolution or understand that we're we're holding in place because if we don't approve a compensation uh, before the contracts go in place, we don't do it after. Well, we need the motions back up uh, in order to read them. But I, I get everybody's point. I mean, uh, there is no yeah. good answer. There's no bad answer here. And I, I get the bad projections and I get trying to be optimistic, but this is not the time to be the district in Central Texas that did nothing for their, their teachers. And by giving them 2%, it keeps our salaries well as well as gives the district the flexibility it might need next year if things do not improve. So um, the feedback that I've received from I teachers, mean, that's the motion I'm going to make. I'm sorry, Grace, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the feedback that, uh, that I've received from teachers is that they understand what's going on in the world and they understand if we can't do anything this year, they're happy to have a job. That's what I've been told. And, you know, I'm sure everyone would love to have a raise and we would love to give a raise, but with a, with a what is it, 28 to $42 million deficit, I, I just am concerned that if we go forward business as usual, that we're going to have to lay people off later. Mm -hmm. And Grace, I, I appreciate that, uh, that, that sentiment that you received from the teachers, that they, they understand that we're all in this together. That, that's what we're saying. So kind of a recap, right? All seven of us on the board want to give raises to our teachers at, at any possible opportunity. Um, we, we took a monumental leap forward last year with a seven point something percent raise. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is, um, and counter, counter to Pam's point um, as being the only district in Central Texas to, to not do anything. Um, we were the only district in Central Texas last year to do so far above and beyond. That's why the other districts in Central Texas have, they feel that they have to do something. They're trying to catch up to us. Um, now is not a time of, of um, who gets to play king of the castle. Teachers understand that we love them, we support them, we want nothing but the best for them, but how many times have we heard it already? What happens two to three years from now when the next biennium is laid before us with, with possible, uh, you could even say probable reductions, and we have to make staffing adjustments that, that devastate some of our teacher families. So um, it, it's passionate. The one thing I will say is um, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that we can have this discussion um, as as openly and honestly and, and, and with the rawness, um, this, this is not an easy decision. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, um, we, we, we've got to make a decision that is, is going to ensure that we can keep the teachers that we have long term. So, um, but I, I thank you, Grace, for that, the, about the teachers understand that I've heard the same. Well, the teacher, uh, you know, if we want to talk rawness and openness, the teachers may know we support them. Of course they do. We appreciate everything, but that doesn't pay the bills and their bills go up and they've got more expenses because of this COVID too. And I, 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 I don't want a deficit. Absolutely not. I'm willing to cut some other things. I'm just not willing to cut the teachers. I don't want to necessarily influence your decision, but I do want to clarify that if the board moves forward with approving the 2% one-time payment, that doesn't lock us into it. The parameters have to be met, and then the board still has to approve that come November. But if you don't at least put that in the compensation plan, you don't have that flexibility later. So if you approve zero, that's, that's what we will go forward with, and we will have no flexibility next fall. So I just want to point that out. Elaine, to put the, let's make sure we're all clear on what you're putting out. So if we vote on this tonight, um, that doesn't say we're definitely given the 2%. We have to vote on that, correct? It would be including the specific language in the compensation plan so that the payment could be made legally. And then in November, if the enrollment hits the amount that was targeted, 41300 
that triggers the ability for the board to approve that payment. But if they are not, if we have more information come November and it's absolutely a not wise financial decision, the board does not have to trigger that payment. But you lose the flexibility to offer that payment if you don't put it in the compensation plan now. Okay. Alexis, uh, a question I have for you. One of the things you're talking about is concern of that enrollment. If the trigger was set with a different enrollment number, does that, does that help give you some confidence in that decision? Yeah, I think the projection of 1800 and then what our trigger is, is far below that. It's just maintaining uh, students that we currently have enrolled. It's not a growth trigger. So to clarify then the trigger we have or that we're that suggested is you're fine with that or would you suggest a lower number for enrollment? The trigger is already below current enrollment. Right. I, I want to know if Alexis would want something lower than that or is she happy with what that number is? I, I mean if we're projecting everything on a budget of 1800 students, why isn't that the trigger? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, Elaine, thank you for bringing that up, right? The, the, the parameters, uh, that is something that uh, um, I, I have lost sight of while, while we're talking about uh, you know, our, our possible scenarios. Um, but uh, Alexis and Aaron's point, um, the, the trigger that authorizes the payment is less than the number of students we have today. So what we would have to do is actually lose students for us to lose the ability to do the raise. So um, I, I think that- Thank you, Jim. I was saying less and I meant, yeah. Thank you for clarifying because I was okay. saying saying it backwards. If, if the trigger you. number was a little bit higher, right? Then, then maybe I could support that. So, so just if I if I may clarify, because um, that that was a, a difficult number to reach. Um, in in what was the trigger going to be? Uh, the rationale behind that number is, um, and I know Aaron, you pointed out it's slightly lower than current enrollment. We try to get it right at a round number, but right at where we would end enrollment for the year at 41,300. We felt like that would be zero growth um, and it would give us, give the board the ability to be pretty sure that they were gonna be able to offer these raises. Um, the, the trick with understanding this is if we don't meet that number, the board loses the ability to offer the 2% one-time payment. However, if, the, if, the, if we do reach that enrollment number or exceed it, the board still has the ability to make the decision to give the payment or not. Um, there's another trigger in there that talks about financial hardship, um, and that financial hardship can be looking out, you know, extending out. We may have more information by then um, that still says we're not comfortable with making the payment. The board can still decide not to make the payment um, for, for that reason. So I just want to make sure that you're very clear about that and why we chose that number. We also wanted to be able to defend that number somehow. It felt a little arbitrary to just pick a number. Um, and so we picked two things. We picked the team snapshot date as the reporting date for what the actual enrollment will be. And then we picked that, that and we could modify it and say whatever we end on on May 29th will be, our, will be the number. Um, that makes it a much more defendable number. Um, but that was the rationale behind that. Okay. Um, Dr. Gearing, I think um, one of the challenges I have with the number is simply that our budget's based on a different number. And so if our enrollment is lower, then we would expect to be in a larger deficit situation than what's currently projected, that $28 million in our in our baseline budget currently. Um, so I, I think part of the challenge here is picking that number is kind of arbitrary. The bigger question is, can we afford to make the payment? Um, it, it's really not a question of how many students do we have. Yeah, that's material in terms of our revenue. Um, but I, I guess my question here is, and I don't know if I necessarily would support this, but the question is, if we didn't have that trigger, if we weren't tied to enrollment, and instead we were making a financial decision in that moment, would that be okay? Or does this 
provision need to have such a trigger? Elaine? You, you need to have a trigger that causes the payment to be approvable, for lack of a better word. So you could set the number at the POSTA projected number. The risk in that is if you're two kids short of that number, you don't get the flexibility. So we set yeah. the number to where we felt like we would hit so that the board had the flexibility to approve the payment. Because if you set it at 42.8 and we're only at 42.5, you don't have that flexibility. And I believe if I've seen um, the trend, student growth occurs throughout the year. It's not always at the beginning of the year. And right. so we, we set 41.3 just because we felt like that is a number we could hit to give the board that flexibility. So you wanna be careful about that number, but you do have to have some trigger for that. It's got, something has to occur. And we felt like student enrollment was the best parameter to use in this situation. Yeah. I, I do worry that the parameter being what it is, the optics will be, we hit the marker why didn't the board give us the money that they said they would give us if we hit the marker? I think those optics are challenging for our board when we get to that moment. Um, right, and the call today at one o'clock, um, which was contract uh, negotiations and the attorney saying, you know, it's you get in very tricky uh, water when you do these one-time payments because you get in the gift of public funds and I know we're doing it a legal route because we have a trigger, but even with that, they're, they're still erring on the side of caution of, of offering that as, as a trigger because I would much rather have come because of uh, other districts gave a one-time payment um, in another surrounding district of $500 to teachers for zero to five years or, and then it, it stair-stepped up. And that rewards our teachers, but TEA basically said, then you're against the constitution, you can't do that. And so um, I was hoping to have a different path that we could walk forward. And I just think the triggers or the muddy water that we get to causes additional problems. Just, just remember that one of, the, one of the biggest reasons that we are have put this on the table for consideration is that it buys us a little time in a very uncertain time when things are changing very rapidly. And mm -hmm. so what it does is it allows you to es essentially put off this decision until a little later in the fall. Um, and so we try to design it in such a way that you have that ability to make that decision later on in the fall. It's not going to be an easy decision then necessarily either. You still have to make a tough call. Um, but it at least gives you a little more time to have more information. You'll know the growth number, you'll have the PEAM snapshot, we'll know whether we're in school in person or if we're still remote. We'll uh, by that point probably know if we're, if we're going to have some shutdowns because of the virus. Um, so, so that's all that does is buys us a little bit of time to make this decision um, when we have more information. And as we move through the school year, if I understood too what you said, Elaine, last time, and I guess I do have a dog in the hunt. I still do kind of like the one-time fund. That's where I'm at. Um, but, you know, we can keep talking. That's fine. Elaine, I was thinking uh, things that are, are helping me think that's one of the good, bet op, uh, better options, a good option, there we go, is that um, you mentioned when we did the budget, as we go throughout the year, if we look like this economy or these predictions are coming in, in place, you don't have to hire positions when they leave. So it's not, it's not, a, it's not, it's not redu reducing the force, it's just not hiring or filling in. So you let it naturally um, go out, I guess. And then with that in place, then you're looking at already adjusting those budget numbers as we get ready to come talk about the budget. Is that correct? Yes, and so I'll remind the board, we'll start working on the 21-22 budget by October of this fall. And so, knowing what what is going on at that point we'll start looking at where we're going to make cuts because i agree with everything you said we're not there's there's no desire to bring the board a 45 million dollar deficit every year but we're using some very conservative revenue estimates for next year mm -hmm. that i hope are very low but on the revenue side wanted to paint a bad a worse picture and 
to Aaron's point, the future years, no, they're not the worst case because they don't take into fund to account any funding cuts. But next fall is when we start working for those next two years. And then we start really posturing for what we need to do to survive the effects of the pandemic. And Elaine, when we're looking at triggers, um, the, the trigger of enrollment, I, I, I get that was, y'all chose that for a very specific reason. And one of the reasons it sounds like is to be able to bring that option to the board. Um, if we choose it too high, that option cannot come to the board. However, I guess the board might want to consider what if, what if we do want to choose it a little higher and not have that option. Um, given that discussion, would you still let enrollment be a trigger or would you choose another measure uh, besides enrollment now that you've heard our discussion on Tuesday and now as we're trying to think about how we can best take care of our staff, we want to support them, we want to give them what they need, but we also want to be able to continue to provide um, a solid school system and a good budget that we're balancing. Yes, yeah, so it's all about finances, right? And so what drives the district's finances, tax collections and enrollment? The problem with tax collections is you won't know what level you're at until March because taxes are typically paid in December and January, sometimes February. By that time, you've gone to, through over half of the year. So any employees that left would not qualify for the payment. Employees that onboarded between now and then uh, when the trigger is determined, it gets more complicated in writing the parameters for who qualifies the longer you go into the semester. Right. And there is a way to make it TRS eligible by paying it at the end of the year when work is complete, but that gets really, really complicated. And so the recommendation is to do it in the fall, right before the holidays. It's, it's a good time to, to give people a one-time payment. And the only trigger you really have at that point is what student enrollment is. Property values for next year will have been settled by July. You could use property value growth um, and set it to something based on where we are today at 5.82. You would know that what that value growth is by October, but in this situation, it seemed like student growth was or student enrollment was the more applicable trigger. Board members, any appetite on our preference between enrollment, if we're talking about triggers, between enrollment and property growth? I'm fine with the triggers that are that are in there right now. And I know one of the things we mentioned was we gave a significant, you know, raises last year. Um, we did, we gave a significant amount, but um, our surrounding districts gave significant raises too. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking at some of these. Del Valley gave eight percent. Hutto gave seven point three. You know, uh, everyone, everyone in Texas gave significant, and and they're still giving right now. And um, because of that, I I think that having those those triggers or those contingencies, I like that word better. <laughs> those contingencies in there gives us the flexibility um, to, to adjust it if we need to. And um, so with that in mind, I, I don't know, Trish, I do think we're, can, can we make a motion? Or? You can make a motion and then somebody can second it and we can discuss it. That doesn't mean it'll go forward, but it gives you an area where you're discussing. Um, I, I move to approve the 2020-21 total compensation plan with option two for employee pay raises with contingencies as presented. I second. I have a motion from Gloria and a second from Pam. Any more discussion? And this would be the place to have discussion before we do a vote, so. So we're gonna leave the, the parameters as they are. And basically what we're voting on right now is um, a one-time payment, 2%. We're, we're gonna really make the decision at the end of the year uh, based on whatever information is available, assuming that we meet the threshold uh, of these triggers, um, which have been designed to pretty much ensure that we're gonna have the ability to talk about this in the fall. So what, what this situation sounds like to me is we want to give you 2% in a lump sum. Uh, we're going to say we're going to do it right now, but stay tuned. We may change our mind in November. 
um, when it's going to be an order of magnitude more difficult to at that point say, well, we're just kidding, we're not going to take it. Um, that no, I, no, Jim, what it does allow us to do it. If we don't do, if we don't put it in there right now, then we have no option at all to ever do it again. This yeah, allows I, us to do I get that, Pam. I'm, 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 I'm tracking on that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it, but uh, um, I, I, I'm at the board's will. I, I, can I, can I just give two gentle reminders here as well that I know we've talked a lot about teachers tonight, but these raises affect all employees, not just teachers. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, the second thing is that you are approving not just this one narrow item, but you're improving the whole compensation package with everything else that's in it too. So I just want to make sure that you don't get sidetracked on that this is one issue that when you make this motion the way that you have, you're approving the whole compensation package as it's laid out. Sure. Dr. Gehring, thank you. It is it's obviously something the trustees are trying to, to wrestle the best options to do. Um, I think what, what definitely our district should see is trustees want to do the very best we can, but we have limited resources and we're trying to muddle through how do we best do it. So um, I appreciate all the discussions and it is a hard decision. Um, Just a clarification question. I believe this option uh, includes all the things Dr. Gearing referenced, but it does not include, Kelly, the um, special ed stipend or the substitute pay increases, or are those also included? So this gives you Lex, if we approve that option, this gives you, Dr. Gearing, less flexibility in bringing down the budget overall. Correct. It will, yes, that's correct, Alexis. But Dr. Gearing, you stated that those positions, you are, yes, the stipends are in there, but for the, um, I mean, we also talked about different things we could do with as positions leave that we're able to keep those positions open. I mean, and the other positions that we approved, that we approved those positions, but you have the ability to wait until to fulfill those positions. So just to clarify what, what that means is if you approve these, then um, if you approve the raise, it, it, it will stay in the budget at 5.4 million. If you approve the compensation plan, then that 1.7 million in adjustment for a certain group of employees because of the pay study. And then uh, the items Aaron just mentioned about substitute pay and, and uh, some stipends will get included. And so that money essentially then rolls permanently into the budget. Um, and so, you know, any, any reduction in the deficit that we make will then have to come out of mostly positions, to be honest, because there's very little else, um, there's very little room in, in the, the rest of the budget to, to cut that much. And so that will force us to look very carefully at all of the positions we've released that haven't hired yet. And then all of the additional positions that haven't been released yet, um, we'll have to look very carefully through that to try to determine what it is that we can cut out so that we can bring that budget back to the board um, as, as Aaron suggested. Well, and I'd, I'd like, to be able as a board when we're going to have the budget discussion to have those options right what does getting it down this much look like versus i i, I want to know cost benefit especially because we are uh resource heavy intensive in our personnel and 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 so what is what is the cost as we're doing this so i just want to make sure we look at the different options not just one Terry lynn you may shoot me but is it appropriate to state that the push for the compensation plan was if the board was going to approve traditional raises so that we could get those built into the system for July payroll? If the board is not going to approve traditional raises, but rather a one-time payment, the other components of the compensation plan could potentially be approved in June when we have a revised budget presented. 
I, I will let Kelly weigh in on that, but they're all tied together. Those market adjustments drive how the scales are built and we have to build all of the scales to get them in the system for July. So it, it, if the board does not approve the market adjustments, they're built one way. And if they do, they're built another. And so uh, Kelly, if you wanna weigh in and- uh, So it, I think it is possible on the June 11th meeting, if, if it was approved then, it gives us enough time. If we wait to the June 18th, it's a very tight to build those in and make a July payroll. I feel like we have some contingencies in there to give us time. So I don't, I, I see no reason to push this to, to next month. I mean, before we pay this out, we have contingencies in there and those are much later on when we will know more information. So, um, yeah, my motion. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to have a second, but I, I do want to add one thing because we're we're talking about money and, and and the legislature season and all this. If we're not willing to use our fund balance during a pandemic during this time, then we cannot ex go to the legislatures and expect them to give us money when we have 160 million sitting in our fund balance. I think this is the time to use it. I'm not saying we should use it next year and the year after. I never proved that. But this is the time to use it. And then you go to the legislature with that story. We dipped into our fund balance. We expect you to help us now. Let's do this. Okay. All right. I'm calling a vote. All those in favor for the motion, the Gloria Red, option two, please raise your hand. I need you to hold your hand very still for a while because I am going to count. I see one, two, three, four. Okay. Where's Gloria's hand? I see it. She's, she's one of the four. She's frozen. she's frozen on my screen. I'm sorry. Okay. So I need you to put your hands down now. I need a clear screen. Donna, do you need these names? Are you seeing people and are you able to take, take, take this down? She needs it for her minutes. Donna, I'm going to write down the names just in case Donna asks me later. I have my I have my own icon hidden, so I can't unmute myself when you talk to me until I unhide myself. Um, yes, I am taking this down. Okay, it it please interrupt if you don't see the names or whatever. I'm taking a record as well. All right, um, all those who are not in favor of the motion, those who vote no, please raise your hand and hold them for the time being. One, two, three, three no's. All right. I get motion carries. Does anybody want to? Okay. No, so I do my math. Board members, that was a really hard discussion, and it's not going to get easier. It comes back to us, and we have a budget discussion. So uh, be thinking of the questions you have. Be feel, feel free to reach out, send them towards Elaine, um, because we have more discussions coming up um, next month as far as budget discussions. 